Hey folks, welcome to another episode. Today we're going to be cleaning up and attempting to make a Husqvarna 455 Rancher out of a pile of parts saws that I recently got. A buddy of my dad's uh, runs a logging operation and uh, he's actually renting my granddad's old logging company shop and uh, I just asked him if uh, if he had any junk saws he wanted to get rid of and uh, he said sure get them all <laughs> so um, I ended up with four uh, partial 455 ranchers um, one uh, Husky 268 a John Deere which I think is actually FCO um, uh, CS 71 and uh, three partial stills that uh, I haven't identified the models yet. Um, I've already got one 455 running. I uh, just need a chain for it. Now, that one didn't require very much. Just a, a good cleaning and um, a fuel line and uh, I cleaned the carb. Right now I'm, I'm working with very little money. Uh, don't really have the money to put in for parts to to fix these so I'm trying to uh, just take whatever is usable off of these other saws and uh, put them all into one uh, now the handle that you're looking at on the left is not the handle that went with the uh, crankcase on the right This is the handle. You can see. I don't know if you can see down in there. There's a little discolored spot. Actually, you can see it better on the bottom. You see how that plastic is really discolored right here? Well, apparently this uh, handle assembly sat in a puddle of some kind of chemical that it didn't like. And uh, I was trying to clean this one up yesterday. And uh, I was scraping on it with a screwdriver trying to get most of the the gunk off and I uh, discovered that this area here is really soft I mean you could just sit there and dig right through it so this handles junk um, but what I did was um, the, the handle you see over there on the left was missing well everything that's missing on this one so I took parts off of this handle and put on the other one so we're already well on our way to having a, a Franken saw right now I'm just gonna clean it up and uh, see what it needs I, I don't have a working parts washer at the moment uh, I've got to get a new pump for mine so what we're gonna do is just do our best with uh, compressed air and scraping the gunk out with screwdrivers and brushes and things like that uh, if this turns out to be a good saw that I can get running I'll probably eventually tear it back down again and, uh, and, and give it a, a good thorough cleaning I can see there are a few more things I'm gonna have to swap over like the um, this wire here is uh, something happened to that. It tore that wire loose. I'm going to have to swap the ignition coil over from a, another part saw. And uh, I think this is actually the best. Um, well, this is probably the best piston and cylinder I have at the moment. And uh, I was going to try to transplant this onto another chassis but uh, I, I <laughs> working with what I have here I, I don't have any um, uh, sealer or anything to reseal the clamshell but uh, the reason I was gonna use a different chassis is um, if you can see this gray stuff right here that's JB Weld uh, apparently this thing threw a chain 
and the uh, chain catcher was already well worn off so it just threw the chain all around there and and screwed things up but uh you know I, I don't really I don't really think that that's going to affect it any because this is a clamshell saw and uh, that's not I don't think that's in any area where it could have an air leak uh, I don't know if that if uh, if that cut went into the gas tank I, I really don't know um, if I have to I will swap motors into a different chassis we'll see um, I'm still learning about this and you're going to learn as I go. I just figured I'd make videos about this and uh, hopefully cover some ground that um, other uh, YouTube saw mechanics maybe haven't done. Not saying anything bad about you other guys. I, uh, I love watching other people's videos. I mean, uh, YouTube has pretty much taught me how to do what I what I now know how to do on these saws. I'm just trying to cover some some areas that uh, I haven't found yet. So we're just going to clean this up and throw it together. I'm going to throw some new fuel lines and a primer bulb on it. Well, new fuel lines. I don't have any new primer bulbs of this style, but I've got one or two that are used but still in working con condition. Um, yeah, we're just going to clean it up and throw it together and and uh, see if we get any life out of it. I'm not going to show the cleaning process. Uh, you can pretty much figure that out for yourself. Um, I would, but I really don't want to splatter my camera with uh, a dead tree carcass and goo. So uh, I'm going to clean it up and um, next time you see it, it'll be on the bench. All right, just giving a little update here on the uh, Franken 455 project. Um, these are the three remaining parts saws that I have to uh, swap parts around and stuff. And um, uh, the the one on the left is the one you saw in the first part of the video uh, that has JB Weld on the chassis. And uh, the more I thought about it. You know, I don't think they would have put that JB Weld there for no reason if it was just scratched up. I think it actually, uh, the chain threw off and actually cut into the gas tank. So, I'm thinking about scrapping that idea. Now, I thought the one in the middle had low compression, but looking at the piston, it seems to look okay to me. I think it's just a bad... Uh, decompression valve because uh, it, it seems kind of kind of loose on there and, and doesn't really want to stay in any position um, so I'm thinking about going with this one I think the motors okay uh, this one does not have JB weld on it anywhere uh, it's faded out from sitting in the Sun on the back of a truck for God knows how long but I can kind of bring some of the color back out of it. Uh, I'll just wipe it down with WD-40 and see what that does. Uh, the one on the right here, uh, the motor is totally locked up, but there are still parts I can use. Um, this one has the best muffler out of all these, and it has the best um, brake handle, because these other two, uh, the brake handle was melted right there uh, where the exhaust comes out. Now why you would design a saw where you have the exhaust coming out just under a piece of plastic I don't know. So far there are things I like about these saws and and things I don't such as where the exhaust comes out. Uh, when I first started I thought this is really a really crazy arrangement. Uh, I was trying to get the carburetor off and uh, but then I realized that it's really easy to take the the whole 
motor, chassis, gas tank unit, uh, remove it from the handle assembly, and then it's really easy to get to the carburetor. Uh, there's only uh, three screws that hold the, the whole assembly into the handle, so that's not hard to get out of the way. I'm going to take the uh, coil and wires off of this one. This has the, the best ones, I think. Uh, this one has a little bad spot in the in the uh, plug wire here. Going to swap the decompression valve off of this one onto here and, uh, and go from there and just see what see what we can do with these. Now you, you might think you know these are just totally junk and you know not worth the time to do this but uh, this is a learning experience for me I'm I'm nowhere near an expert on these yet but the way I see it is this is a good way to learn you know uh, if I can make one of these run and make it a complete saw uh, without having to buy very many parts uh, you know that that's just uh, more experience for me uh, one thing I will have to buy uh, is a brake band, uh, a chain brake band. Um, I have two uh, two more clutch covers, but uh, neither one of them have the band still in it. Uh, the uh, other one that I fixed up that is running currently, uh, it's it's complete. It, it has everything and. The only thing I need to buy for it is a chain. Um, if I get one of these running, I will have to buy a bar and chain. All right, folks, we're back. Um, I had planned uh, to make this video uh, a little more in depth with the uh, how-to stuff, but due to my camera battery dying at an inopportune time uh, this video has turned into more of a documentary uh, but let me tell you what I've done so far <clears throat> okay um, I replaced the coil uh, ignition coil assembly uh, because the the one on this saw had a, uh, a bad plug wire uh, so I replaced that um, I replaced the decompression valve uh, took it off of one of the other saws. I uh, replaced the fuel lines. Uh, put a another, not a new, but just another primer bulb in there. One that appears to not be cracked and, and still usable. Uh, I swapped carburetors, and really the only reason I did that is because and this leads me into a, a little design feature that I kind of like about Husk, about uh, these particular Husqvarna's um, if you can see right here this little blue thing is actually broken off on this particular carburetor but um, this is part of a little clip that rotates down and holds the throttle linkage in uh, it makes it really easy to get the throttle linkage uh, removed and and uh, installed back in the saw. You just have to kind of uh, pull out on the little blue plastic tab and swing it uh, up out of the way and then you can just lift the uh, throttle linkage out. But the reason I just swapped it, the entire carburetor was this is a, a small um, kind of brittle plastic piece and I didn't want to risk breaking the other one trying to get it free from the other carburetor so I just swapped the entire carburetor assembly out. Now if you'll look here you'll see the uh, the blue plastic clip that is not broken. Uh, you simply insert the throttle linkage down in this little notch here and just flip that closed and it'll snap in and uh, hold that throttle linkage in there for you. That's a really neat feature. They, they were actually thinking about uh, ease of maintenance 
and service somewhat when they designed this saw. So really all I have to do to this saw now, I think, is um, I need to put the best muffler I have on and uh, I need to reconnect the ground and kill wire and let me do that right now. There's two separate spade connectors. Uh, one of them goes right here. That's the one with the black wire, the, the ground wire. Just slides on there. And now this other one has a, a female uh, spade connector, but it doesn't actually slide on to another spade connector. It just fits into the kill switch right here. Just like that. And it's just pressure fit holding it in there and that's actually just the edge of that connector makes contact um, to kill the motor. Uh, I will be probably replacing the clutch drum on this uh, because that sprocket looks pretty wore out. I've got another sprocket. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right this second. I just want to get it packed together and throw some gas in it and see if it runs. So I guess the next step would be uh, I'm going to put the handle back on and uh, put the muffler on, put the starter cover on, and put some gas in it and see what she does. Alright, I'm going to try to show you the installation of the throttle linkage. Now this is pretty easy. Um, it's one of the easiest I've seen. All right, you've got this uh, this little dust cover here that just slides down in a slot right there in front of the handle. And uh, you've got this white plastic piece that goes in there like this. So what you want to do is just push it through that little rubber piece and uh, you'll see the little rectangular hole this white part goes in. Just work it in there. And all you do is take the linkage and just hook it in that little notch and then just take your pliers and you kind of want to pull out just a little bit and swing that down to lock it in. Now your throttle linkage is locked in and works. Now that's pretty easy compared to some of the saws I've worked on. Again, I'm by no means an expert. Um, you're learning with me as I go. But, you know, this is a good way to learn about it. Just, uh, you know, ask around and see if anybody's got a pile of junk saws laying around they don't want that you can get for uh, little or nothing and uh, you know just ask if you can have them or or buy them or whatever and you know just get you a pile of parts just just start messing with stuff really uh, I don't have a whole lot of a lot of money in this or money to put in it at the moment uh, I'm hoping that'll change just give you a little backstory here these videos that you see on the bench are actually being filmed inside a uh, old rundown camper trailer that uh, I'm using for storage and for a saw shop because I, I really don't have any anywhere uh, at the current time to have a saw shop and we're on a three acre uh, empty lot well, empty other than this trailer sitting here uh, no electricity out here my lighting comes from battery powered LED lights and uh, when I need to run the air compressor or something like that I have to uh, drag the generator out and crank it up. I'm trying to get things going for me you know I, I want to start my own business um, uh, got a couple of things I want to get into and um, my YouTube videos will kind of follow that I'm going to eventually be doing some woodworking videos whenever I have a woodworking shop but for right now it's uh, pretty much going to be uh, chainsaw mechanic and <laughs> but um, yeah anyway we're gonna get this uh, stuck the rest of the way back together um, 
everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm just going to throw the muffler on there. That's just three bolts. Um, let's stick the air cleaner on there now. I, I blew this out. I know it probably needs a new one or a better washing, but it's clean enough that if the saw is going to run, it should run. All right, so uh, we'll get it stuck the rest of the way back together and see what it does. Success! Right there just goes to show you I did not do anything else to the saw other than assemble it and put gas in it uh, since you last saw it on the bench there this is the first time I've ever seen it run now that, that just goes to show you that sometimes uh, one man's trash can be another one's treasure I mean, th this saw was built from a, a pile of parts. I put absolutely zero money in it. I just swapped parts around and pulled it a few times, and it runs. I've got a running saw. I actually have two running 455 ranchers that I got for absolutely nothing. So that's pretty awesome. And, it, you know, if you're wondering where to get things like this, just ask around. Um, I got this from a logging crew, you know, I, I got their whole junk saw pile, and uh, there are a couple other saws uh, that uh, I haven't messed with yet that uh, I will be doing videos on, but out of four 455 ranchers, or partial 455 ranchers, I made two that are running saws and didn't have to put a penny into them other than, well, I, I will have to buy bars and chains and things like that. Um, uh, I haven't checked to see if the oilers are working. I just wanted to see if the motors run. Now that I know that I have two of these that run, I can go and, and uh, check to see if the oil pumps work and, you know, all that good stuff. But just getting it running is the first thing. Now that now that I know this one runs, I'm going to try to clean it up a little better because it's still pretty nasty. Um, even though I did give it a really good, well, not a really good cleaning, but it's a lot better uh, than it was when I first got it. Believe me, I mean you, you couldn't, you could barely even tell this thing was orange. <laughs> it was so caked with with just gunk and goo and everything like that. Let's see if it'll start one more time for me. That is awesome. That's freaking awesome. Two running saws for free. <laughs>